Hello again. Um, first off, welcome to my drone room. This is now my official drone room where I will do all my drone work from, carry out all my surveys from here, um, do all my repairs from here, etc. And also store it all because it's the most secure place I've got. Um, so everything now is here that is drone orientated. Um, let's have a quick look around first before I get started. Eh? Here's my desk. And the landing pad, which is not going to be used in the position it's in. Um, there I've got the uh, Agricultural Inspire 1, uh, also the Mavic over in the corner there, and my FPV glasses on the top. Um, and there I've got a display cabinet, which houses uh, the Storm. I, I, I class it as my toy drones. It's got the uh, two Storms in there. And it's got the Hudson's in there, which is mine and the kids, a couple of them, and FPVs we've got there with it, and controllers, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then obviously the box as well for uh, my other Inspire, and all my uh, clothing gear. <laughs> then I've got the dear old mummy. Hello, mummy. Um, just keeps all my uh, DVDs and stuff in it. The storage point. And then this side on open display for everybody to see, I've got my um, other Inspire. That's the one with the X5 into it. Um, a few workshop toys that I made. Uh, a couple of cameras. I've got two of the X3s. I'm going to be dealing with one of them today. Um, controls. This is basically about I charge everything. So I'm going to be charging everything all laid out on this desk. And there's my lovely... Crystal Sky Monitor. I do like that. Crystal Sky Monitor. This is the drone I want to have as an agricultural drone. So basically set up so that all it does is agricultural work. Surveys of ground, of land, condition of the ground and such. Um, the other ones will be doing the other work. But this one dedicated just for that. In order to do that, it needs an NDVI camera. I don't have one. And they're colossally expensive almost half as much as the drone itself. So what I did, I did a bit of research on these um, NDVI cameras um, just to see what ways I could get around this, what I, what I could do. Because at the end of the day, I haven't actually got any agricultural work to do yet. I've got some proposals, I've got lots of interest, but until I've actually got some, there's no income from it. So I can't go investing thousands and thousands into a camera and then find out that really none of the work's gonna come back at me. Because straight away, obviously, you've lost a hell of a lot of money as soon as you buy equipment these days. Um, so, I did some research and um, straight away, I came up with this. Now, this is showing you an NDVI camera that's been converted professionally and they want $1,300 for it. It's not too bad, but the main point is, it's an X3 camera. So, I thought to myself, right, well if they can do it, why can't anybody else do it? So I started researching, how do you convert an X3 camera? I've got two of them. So why buy another camera if I can convert one? If it's possible. If they can do it, I don't know. We can have a go. So, on researching it, I found that all it is is the standard stock lens that they have in the camera is replaced for another cam another lens that gives you this outer perimeter light view. So you're going into virtual infrared and such um, that a normal camera wouldn't give you. But is it possible to change that lens? Right, well that was the research I did. And it turned out, I found out it is possible. You can do it. So, I have the camera. This is the one that will be for that drawer. I then found a company in America that managed to supply me with their lens. Now, these cameras originally they were around 600 quid, but if you watch on eBay, you will see they keep popping up for around 250, 300. As long as they're in mint condition, you know, or as mint condition as you want, 
people tend to look after this sort of equipment, so it tends all to be in good condition. As long as there's no faults with it, 300 quid is not bad. That cost you just under 300 quid as well. But that means that $1,300, which is what a pound now at about 1,100 quid, has just been put down to 600 quid. So I just save 500 quid there. As long as I can do it. Right, so the other thing to think of, and that is the gold drone. When I put this lens into this camera, how am I going to differentiate between the two cameras if they should get mixed up? So what I did is the cases on it, I got gold ones. So when I change the lens, I'll change the case at the same time. Now we will get into the procedure without talking. It's a very complex and intricate thing, but doesn't take long of changing this lens.
Uh, what I'm doing now basically is just um, focusing the lens. Which is not an easy job.
I'm going to try it on the standard green spoon to see what that's like. But green, very green, but it's supposed to do. It's looking as sharp as it needs to be. You see how they, you can see the writing there, it's nice and clean now, crisp. But it's picking up all the green spectrum there, which is perfect, just what I wanted. Right, okay, well that is a success. Now I've got an NDVI camera, working very nice. Um, and it can be done for less than 600 quid, so it's worth doing it that way. Do a little bit fiddly, just be careful what you're doing, but otherwise, perfect. And should I ever want to change it back, I still have the other lens, but I won't be. Right, well, once again, thanks for watching. If you've got any comments about this, um, any questions about it or anything, just shove them in the bottom, I'll get back to you when I can. Um, but keep an eye out, once I start getting some um, surveys done, um, just on, on testing first, I uh, will um, post some video just to show you what effect it has. And, how, how useful it is. So keep a watch out for them. I'll, I'll be posting them up as soon as I get them done. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Bye for now.